Hi, I'm Dr. Jolliffe and I am going to be talking to you today about rhetoric. We will be learning about rhetoric and the different rhetorical appeals that we can use as writers and that we can also consider when doing research. First, I want to talk to you about the definition of rhetoric. A very simple definition of rhetoric is the art of persuasion. We face um, persuasion every day. We try to persuade people. For instance, right now I'm trying to persuade you that rhetoric is an important topic and that we should be thinking about it in terms of our own writing and also in terms of how we perceive the writing of other people as we explore research. You also face rhetoric when you turn on the TV and watch commercials, when you turn on the radio and hear commercials like that wonderful, crazy Kevin Powell commercial. Believe it or not, that is rhetoric. When you enter a doctor's office and the doctor is someone who, whom you are listening to, all right, and in that case, there's rhetoric being performed by the doctor. The doctor is trying to convince you to listen to him or her about how you can improve your health or how you can maintain your health. So we are faced all the time with rhetoric, the art of persuasion. Today we are going to be thinking about rhetoric in terms of the rhetorical appeals and also in its application to our own writing and to our own research methods. I want to present to you the rhetorical situation. This is something that Aristotle defined for us and he, he said that there are three main parts to the rhetorical situation. Three main appeals found in a rhetorical situation. The first being logos. Logos is another word for logic, a logical appeal. Pathos, an emotional appeal. And ethos, ethical appeal. Logos, the logical appeal, this has to do with making sense. Does the argument make sense? Is the argument backed up by claims and backed up by research, by evidence? This is a logical appeal. Pathos, an emotional appeal. This is a very strong kind of appeal because we all have very strong emotions around certain things. So pathos is an emotional appeal. Are we appealing to people's fear? Are we appealing to people's happiness? Sense of security? That would be an emotional appeal or pathos. And then there is ethos, which is an ethical appeal. All right. We all have a certain ethical appeal. I have an ethical appeal to you because you know that I am your course instructor. That somehow I have been selected by leadership at DCCC to teach classes in English. And that involved a vetting process 
that involved interviewing, that involved having certain credentials. I've, intervie I've introduced myself as Dr. Jolliffe, and of course, you're welcome to call me Grant. But as an instructor, I introduce myself as Dr. Jolliffe because I have a PhD. I have certain credentials. That is an ethical appeal. You also see that um, you also see it the other way around. All right. So a someone who is writing an article has certain ethical appeals to their audience as well. So they have credentials. They have um, associations with universities or with colleges or with organizations. They also have um, certain funding sometimes. That indicates ethical appeal. So as a speaker or as a writer, we can employ these appeals, the appeal of logic, the appeal of emotion, ethical appeals, to convince our audience that we are talking about something that they should listen to, that they should uh, follow, the art of persuasion. And as consumers of this, as the audience of this, we also need to consider the rhetorical situation. Does the speaker actually have ethical appeal? Do they have the credentials? Are they presenting them in a way that is honest? Are they making an argument that makes sense? And are they backing up their argument with a claim, a reasonable claim? And are they backing up that claim with evidence, with support, with details. And then there's also pathos, an emotional appeal. Is this speaker trying to appeal to my emotions in a way that's manipulative? Or is this person using an emotional appeal that is reasonable? So as writers or speakers, we need to be aware of the rhetorical situation and how we are appealing to the audience using logic, emotion, and ethics. But also as readers, as listeners, as the audience, we need to consider how the rhetorical situation is being used to convince us and whether or not that is acceptable to us as the viewers. Whether or not that indicates that, in fact, this is something that should be persuading us. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my short lecture on rhetoric and the rhetorical situation.